you want to compare two strings that are equal or not, you have two methods. One that is called equals, which depends on Unicode or ASCII code, and we the, the, the comparing is using lexicographical ordering. And the other one is called equals ignore case, which depends on the letters only. So it depends on alphabetical ordering. And for comparing two strings, we cannot use less than, we cannot use equal, equal, y, because they are classes. And for classes, they are not a primitive. We need to use methods for comparing. Similarly, if you have now two objects for the user defined classes, for example, bank account or circle uh, classes. So how to compare two objects that they are the same or not? So we cannot use equal, equal to compare two objects. We must write a method that is called equals, or you can name it by any name, but usually they call it equals. So we must write a method for a given class, which will make the comparison as needed. So the equals method is used the same way as equals method we used for a string. And I will show you how it is used and how we are going to write one for our, uh, for our classes. Now, if you want to compare two objects, then you have to go inside the data of the class and see which data that you want to use for comparing. So select the appropriate data members that will be used for testing the equality of the two objects. As an example on how to define the equals method in a class and how to use it to compare the equality of two objects created from this class, here is a class definition for a flower. It has a three data members, the name of the flower, the price of the flower, and the quantity of the flower. It has one constructor that initializes the three data members. It has the setters and getters. It has a method that computes the total price by multiplying the price by the quantity. And finally, it has a method that prints the information of the object created from this class by printing the name, price, and the quantity. Before writing the definition for the equals method, let us create some objects from this class and discuss which of the data members of this class that we should use to test for the equality of any of these objects. I have already prepared the main program that is called Flower Demo. It has the main method inside it. We are going to create three objects of this class. The first object we will call it flower1 for the first flower. And this is the constructor. The name of this flower will be rose. The price is 3.5 and the quantity is 8. For the second flower, we will call it flower2. And the name of this flower will be tulip. The price will be 3.5 and the quantity is 9. And now for the third flower, we will call it a flower 3. The name will be lotus. The price will be 5.6 and the quantity will be 8. Let us run the viewer canvas and see the details of these objects and the viewer canvas. Run the viewer canvas. Here we have an error. Yes, we have a spelling mistake. It should be F-L-O-W-E-R. Run it again. This is our viewer canvas. Let us step into the program. So now three objects are created. We will drag these objects into the canvas. See the state of these objects. So this is the object for flower one, this is the object for flower two, and this is the object for flower three. Now the question is which of the data members that we should use to tell whether two objects are equal or not? Now, is the flower one equal to flower two? The answer is no. Why? Because they have different names, although they have the same price. So price cannot be used for comparing two objects whether they are equal or not. Now, is the flower one equal to flower three? The answer is no. Why? Because they have different names, although they have the same quantity. So quantity cannot be used for comparing two objects are equal or not. So the only choice for the data members that we should use to compare two objects, whether they are equal or not, is the name. So from our discussion, the conclusion is that we are going to use the name for comparing whether two objects are equal or not. So let us go back to the class definition and write the definition for the equals method.
Now we are back in the class definition. We are going to define the equals method below the print method. It will be public, boolean, the name equals, and the input parameter will be an object of the same type, flower, and we are going to call it another flower. Now what we want to do inside this method, we want to compare the name of this class with the name of the other flower. So we will say if this dot name equal equal another flower dot name. If this is the case, then this method will retain a true. Otherwise, this method will retain false. Or we can write this if statement for short. We can just say simply here, return, and we will put the comparison between the brackets. So the result of this comparison will be the retain value for this method. And there is no need for if and else. But remember that for the name, it is a string. And for strings, if we want to test for equality, we cannot use equal equal. There are methods inside the string that are called equals and equals ignore case. We're going to use equals ignore case, assuming that the spelling is more important than the case. So here we will say name dot equals ignore case, and we will supply the other string as input parameter to the equals ignore case method. And this completes the implementation for the equals method. Let us compile the class. So there is an error. It says there is an extra bracket. Compile again. And now it does not have any error. Now let's go back to our main program and use this method to compare whether two objects created from this class are equal or not. Now we are back to our main program. So first, we would like to compare the objects flower1 with the flower2. There are two remarks that we need to address here. First, you cannot say if flower1 equal equal flower2 for comparing two objects whether they are equal or not. Because here you are not comparing the contents of the objects. You are comparing the references of these objects. And it's always that whenever you create two objects, the references will be different. So the result of this comparison is always false. This is the first remark. Now for the second remark, the equals method exists in both flower1 and flower2. So if you want to use equals method in flower1, then you have to give flower2 as input parameter to this method. And whenever you want to use the equals method in flower2, then you have to give flower1 as input parameter to the equals method. Both will do the same job. So here you have to say that if flower1 dot equals and then you put the second object as input parameter if the comparison is correct then simply what we will do we will just simply print a message that says flower one is equal to flower two otherwise we will print a message i will copy the message or copy the statement for printing this message and here we say that flower1 is not equal to flower2 so now let us trace the program using the viewer canvas so we will run the viewer canvas we will step into the program so now the three objects are created we will drag them into the viewer to see their contents while tracing the program and now here we are making the comparison. So what we will do, we will go inside the object flower1, specifically inside equals. And flower2 will be given as input parameter. So we will step in. And now we are inside the equals method of flower1. Now flower2 is given as input parameter, but inside the flower1, it is given the name another flower. So let me show you now I will drag the object another flower. And now compare another flower with the flower two. As you can see, both contain the same data because both of them points to the same object. So now the method will compare 
the name and if you look at the name for example if you go inside this and you can see that this is the content for flower one it is rose the name of the flower it is a price 3.5 and it is eight as the quantity so now we are calling the equals method of a flower one so now we are in a flower one and flower two is given as input parameter with a different name that is called another a flower now since they have different names now when we return back from this method it will return false and therefore we will go to else statement and the output will show that flower one is not equal to flower two now we will make a small change now instead of having the name tulip for flower two we will write rose so now flower one and flower two have the same names so therefore when we call the method equals then the equals method will compare the two names and will find that they are equal it will retain it true so let us do it so we will run the canvas now trace the program we are creating now the three objects as you can see the three objects are created and now we will go inside the flower one and now we are inside the flower one see here and now the comparison should be true so when we come back as you can see the comparison is true and what will be printed on the output screen that the flower one is equal to flower two and this completes the implementation of the equals method in a class This is an example also also for circle and if you want to write equals method for circle so you write public boolean and the name will be equals and see we are using the name of the class for the other class for the other object that's coming from outside which is called other circle so inside it will check for the two radiuses if the current radius is equal to the radius of the other object coming from outside then it will return true, otherwise it will return false.